I put the jaw back together, and I'll get the puppet mechanism working next time. And I'll just keep making pieces, and we're gonna continue building parts until I have a full suit that I can wear, hopefully by next summer. Hello, I'm Odin, and today's Mecha Godzilla video is going to be about getting his head corrected. I want to make the neck swivel better, I want to make the mouth move, you know, I want to help him get his head put on right. It was my desire from the very beginning to have Mecha Godzilla's head turn and to have the mouth open and close without electronics. I even started some of the mechanics for that. He has a spring loaded jaw, so it'll stay shut without any extra effort from me. But before I tackle the jaw movement, I want to improve the head swivel. Now, there's just too much drag right now. It's difficult to make the head move. So when I had everything put together, I wasn't really happy with how well the head was turning because it's just foam on foam. It works, but it's got a lot of resistance and it has a tendency to not really stay where it's supposed to be. Not the robotic look that I want. And so I looked and I found an aluminum Lazy Susan, that is almost exactly the right size. So what I want to do is I want to put this in place of the very top of the neck and the very bottom of the head and uh, see if I can't get the two parts to swivel much more like they're supposed to. This would enable the head to spin around and do the, uh, do the move to make it look like I was generating a, a shield over all of Mechagodzilla. I'm not in intending on making that particular mechanism happen, but at least this particular piece would certainly facilitate that potentially in the future. I just wouldn't be able to be in the costume when it was happening because my head would be in the way. I have done some measurements before. I know what size of Lazy Susan to get. This thing is so close to being just exactly right. But this is the first time that I've really looked at both it and the neck at the same time. That actually fits. I mean, I got it crammed in there. If you look really closely, this is what I don't like. It creates a parabola. It creates a, a, a bend in the neck and it's not the straight up and down that I really want it to be. And so I figure I've got two choices. I can either, well, I guess I got three choices. Um, basically, I can either grind something down, right? Which means I either grind down the aluminum disc. Honestly, that was my first thought. Uh, or I can grind down the inside of the foam neck ring and make it thinner so the aluminum can fit without any modifying it at all. That was a second thought. It's probably a better plan. Or I can take this back spike off, split this back seam open, and put in another new piece that's just enough to allow everything to open up for this to fit right. That's probably the best plan because it's going to require the least amount of destructive uh, changes. So let's do that. The spike has a flat edge when it's glued to a round neck, so it's pretty easy to cut off. Then I mostly cut right down the original seam. I wandered a little bit there, but it'll be covered by the spine. And I had put a strip inside on the seam to make it stronger. That's going to need to be replaced as well. Now that I can see the ring in place, I know just how much extra I'm going to need. The other thing is the, the head and neck wasn't really truly round, which I guess it really doesn't matter, but um, it bugged me, so now it will be. All right. While holding the foam shut, I can see what I need to make. I simply mark some foam for the length that I need and cut a wedge that is 13 millimeters at the widest. I also try to square off the top. I probably should have made this cut after it was all glued in. A quick test fit before I commit to glue. And on goes the contact cement. For all of these neck seams and repairs, I'm going to use two coats of contact cement. The second coat really does grip better than just a single layer of cement. I just need to be careful not to drip any onto the painted parts because it'll ruin the paint. It's really funny how set I was on grinding things down, on, on either removing material from the Lazy Susan or removing material from the inside of the neck. It just didn't even occur to me to split it open until just now when I was actually looking at the parts on the table. It's like, oh, I should do it. 
I should do it like this. While the cement dries, I remove the little plastic feet from the ring. Yeah, them's pass through. Okay, oh, look at that. They're countersunk on the one side for wood screws. Okay, wood screws are good. After 15 minutes or so, the contact cement has dried to being sticky and I can stick the new little wedge piece in place. And now the Lazy Susan fits. Yeah, there we go. I start cutting out strips of what the foam to make a new ring that will go inside the neck. I plan on making it three layers thick, or 24 millimeters, just to hold the aluminum ring in place and give me something to attach it to. I set the ring on the table and then I put the neck over it. Now I can just glue the strips in place right over the ring and everything will be as flat as the table. I mark where I expect the screws to go to hold the ring in place. When I screw the Lazy Susan in, the screw could go between the layers, so I'm going to need even more screws from the side to keep the layers together and prevent separation. And I'm also going to use some finish washers on these drywall screws, just so the point of the screw doesn't poke out the neck. By inserting these screws between the two sideways ones, I feel like the four simply won't just separate the layers and fall out. Now to cut the neck down. I had marked where the piece fit before I started, and I can use the points of my calipers to mark a cutting line around the rest of the head. Then I use a brand new blade to cut off the part I no longer need, and cut more strips of 6mm what the foam. These layers I'm gluing inside of the head to attach to the inner ring of the Lazy Susan. And I had also glued these rings about a millimeter longer than the painted edge, so the head portion won't drag on the neck ring. Such a huge difference. Oh, that's great. Okay. I use some slightly longer drywall screws to attach the head. I'm thinking this is going to be okay. I can always add threaded inserts later on if the drywall screws fail, but for now... It does the thing! Okay, cool. Okay, I put a lot more weight on it, so these little magnets in the shoulders are going to need to be improved because they're not going to be good enough anymore. They were barely good enough to start with. Like, which part do I want to do next? Um, <laughs> what I really want to do is I really want to get the mouth to open. The only way I can figure out that I can puppeteer it to make it do that from inside the suit as a costume is attach the string to my chin. So I'm gonna need to make a little, you know, chin strap, chin cup thing that, that fits, which I'll get a head cast, I'll just heat some Sintra or something and make a, make a thing. And then uh, hopefully I can just, ah, ah, and that'll actually make the mouth open enough. But before I can start on the mouth, I need to fix the inner human helmet to Mechagodzilla's head. I check how well the helmet still fits. And I spent a really long time trying to figure out how well the red helmet will fit inside of the mecha head. And I became so focused on it that I started carving on the red helmet and wasted a lot of time going back and forth and trying to figure out where the drag was that was happening inside the helmet, what was rubbing, and why it didn't turn as easily as it should. But in the end, my mistake was forgetting to put on the shoulders first because the neck sits higher when worn correctly, and all the fitting and carving that I did didn't do any good. <laughs> I'm cutting all this stuff out, and I'm not taking into account the fact that uh, I've got a lot more room in here now. <laughs> okay. You can see how much room I've got, how much play I have inside the head here. Um, I've been cutting away the helmet because I thought the helmet was going to fit up inside the head. It doesn't. Uh, I'm going to need to add some material that the helmet's going to be able to attach to the head with. I'm going to need to, to <laughs> make some spacers, right? Um, all right. How do I measure that while I'm wearing it? This may not be something I can do without an assistant. 
But even then, how could the assistant do it? So my solution, don't measure it. First, I add a ring to fit the inside of the Lazy Susan and bring the head down to meet the red helmet. Then I mark approximately yeah. where I think I the two parts are gonna be fitting together. Here. Now I was crazy wrong and off with this mark, but I got a good enough of an idea that I could here. make something work. I used some foam core to figure out the curves on the helmet and then trace them onto some really thick kneeling pad foam. And I cut the thick foam with a bandsaw. And what I got was wedge shapes that will connect the top of the helmet to the inside of the head ring. I can use contact cement to glue some hook side of Velcro onto each wedge. And then I cover the top of the helmet with some of the soft loop side, and I line the inside of the head ring with more soft loop Velcro. The head is actually supported by the neck and shoulders of the costume, so this Velcro connection is only to help me turn the head, and I can adjust the fit as needed whenever I wear it. Now that I have a helmet system that'll survive the first couple of cons, I need to make the mouth open. So here's the back of the jaw inside the head. Can, can we see that at all? So you can see where the movement happens. And what I need to do is from that point that's moving down, I need to have something come off of that a little bit that I can attach a string to that'll go up into the top of the head, right? So if I, if I have a flat piece of the back of the jaw and it gets pulled in that direction, that's gonna pull the jaw down because it's a lever on the wrong side, right? or on the other side. I can remove the jaw by cutting off just one rivet and then pulling the carbon fiber rod out that holds it all together. I have more of this same rod, so I cut out another small piece and work it into some layers of four millimeter what the foam. I glue all that into the jaw and I have my lever to open the mouth. I want a pulley that goes inside of the head to reduce friction for the string. So I cut the plastic off this random thing that I found Okay. And I just keep the nylon pulley that's on a metal axle. I cut pieces of six millimeter what the foam to make some new sides and use my cause tools hole drill to make a spot for the axle to fit through. And I can just force the metal through the foam. I place a bit of floor mat foam between the layers because this keeps them equally apart. So when I use contact cement to glue the pulley into the wall right behind the back of the mouth, everything's gonna line up and there isn't gonna be any pinch points to stop the movement of the cord. The cord I'm going to use is paracord, because paracord doesn't really stretch. I just make a loop on one end and slip some heat shrink tubing over it, and that'll make the smallest knot that I can possibly make to fit over the carbon fiber rod. And I'll still need some super glue to keep the cord in place, you know, so it doesn't slip. I can put the mouth back together, including the springs that I'm using to keep the mouth shut. Take this, attach it to the very end. Might need a small bit of super glue. Okay, so after all that, can he talk? Yes, yes it can. And it's pretty easy to pull the cord by hand, but now I need to attach it to my chin. So originally it was an experiment, and ended up working out really well. I didn't shoot it, but I took a bit of foamed PVC board. I usually call this Sintra, it's a brand name, it's foamed PVC board. Heated this up with a heat gun and then pressed it up against the chin of my plaster head cast. And that gave me a little chin cup that's perfectly formed to fit me. So I'm gonna cut this down to be the right size and then I can elastic this to the red helmet and off of this, I can attach the string that I can actually pull with. I hope. It's gonna be weird, I can have the string like run right down the front of my face probably, but we'll find out. I cut and sanded the chin cup with my belt sander and then rounded the edges with the sanding drum on my rotary tool. I have a wide elastic band from an old headlamp, which I can use for the main strap. I cut holes in the sides of the cup for the strap to slip through, and I bent some aluminum wire to make loops for the strap to attach to the helmet. And these loops will fit over some what the foam pieces, and strips of two millimeter what the foam will keep it all in place. I drill a pilot hole into the edge of the foam PVC and screw in a small eye bolt as a place to loop the paracord and tie it to my chin. All right, I made one other modification to the helmet while we weren't looking. I added a couple of extra straps that goes to the chin. This whole thing is real iffy. I'm getting it on by myself. 
No, what you can't see through my hands is that I have a pair of straps that have adjustment buckles to keep the chin cup under my chin. The first time that I tried this, the paracord pulled the chin cup out from under me. And it's still really hard to put the head on all by myself. The chest moves and everything just sits wrong. But instead of tying the cord, I have one of those spring-loaded beads. It's like a spring stop. And I can use that to easily adjust the tension between the mouth and my chin. Knowing how I look on the inside probably takes some of the magic out of the suit, but this is the first working test. After I finished shooting, I added snaps to the back of the head straps so I can unsnap them from the chin, which lets me take the whole head off without having to remove the red helmet. Well, I don't have my arms on because, you know, I'm gonna need help with that. <laughs> Boy, this is awkward. He doesn't quite just talk, but you know, maybe he does because my jaw doesn't move that much. So maybe it is all kind of uh, proportional. Anyway, well, uh, this could use a little bit of refinement, I would imagine. This is my first real attempt without a mirror, without a really good idea. This thing is cumbersome, but uh, <laughs> no. it kind of works. Worst part is when the plastic bead hits me in the face. So I wonder if I can't uh, make that not hit me directly in the face. I'm gonna put it up a little higher. Is that gonna help at all? A little bit. <laughs> Hits me differently at least, but it's not hitting me in the teeth. But uh, it's really kind of cool to know that I'm getting it to work. It's gonna work. <laughs> and I'll see you again real soon with more Mecha Godzilla. But you know, there's gonna be lots of different ways you could build a Mecha Godzilla suit. But this <laughs> is how Odin makes. One of the things I realized is I'm getting a one-to-one -one movement ratio with this setup. If I cut the cord and then attach it back to the top of the head, and I can put another pulley inside of this little loop here, I'll actually get a two-to-one ratio for the mouth movement. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mechagodzilla. <laughs> and I guess it's kind of a puppet. That's exciting. Not really, no. <laughs> okay. I don't know how dangerous that is, so let's not do that anymore, but still. <laughs> I want to thank Paul Frankovich, the doctor, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.